G'day Internet, welcome back to another video. So if you've been following the channel of late, you'll know that I've put a couple of modern screens into some of my handheld consoles, primarily the Game Gear and the Lynx. But that kind of leaves out what is arguably uh, the most iconic handheld console of all time, and that would be the Game Boy. And that's coming from a Sega guy. To kind of prove this point, I posted up to my friends on Facebook asking for those that have kids, say, under 10 years old, would they recognise the Game Boy or at least know what it was? Uh, and the overall uh, response I got was yes, either they would recognise it as a Game Boy or at least something Nintendo or Mario related and that it was a games console. And the reason I chose 10 years or younger, because that would mean that they were born 20 years after the Game Boy was released. Anyway, beside that's all beside the point. I've picked up a funny playing IPS screen that I'm going to install today into a Game Boy. Not my nice box one. We're going to put it in this one right here, which is uh, a little on the grubby side. Uh, it's got some bad battery contacts, but that's easily fixed. Uh, the case needs a scrub and this keeps falling off, but that's fine because we re need, need to replace that anyway. So I guess the first step is to bust out the old tri-wing screwdriver and pull this old fellow apart. Right, here is our donor Game Boy. So let's flip it over and start removing some screws. It's gonna keep falling off, isn't it? Right, with the screws out, we should be able to separate this and disconnect the ribbon cable. All right, this bit here can go to one side, although off camera, I'm gonna go clean up the battery terminals, but you can go over there. Next, we need to turn our attention to the top half and with a Phillips head screwdriver, remove the plethora of screws that hold the main board in. From here, we can put the top case aside for a little bit, but don't put it too far away. We are gonna need it. Uh, the next part is to remove uh, the speaker from this PCB because we are going to want to keep the speaker. The next thing we want to pay attention to is the top half of the case and we flip it over. We need to start by removing these two screw posts just here. So I'm going to start by removing this little bit of adhesive stuff. Uh, and remove these. To do that, I'm going to use a pair of flush cutters. Which will get you the most flush to begin with. And then I had a little bit of sandpaper around here somewhere. And I'm just going to sand these down nice and flush. Right, they're as flush as they need to be. The next bit is kind of the one that I'm least looking forward to. If you have a look round the screen, there is a ridge here. We need to cut that out. Now, the only tips I've really been given for this is to use a brand new, very sharp blade. And when it comes to finally removing it, a pair of blunt nose pliers. I've really only got one shot at this, so wish me luck. Right, with it all scored around the edges, grab your flush cutters, and what we want to do is we just want to put a small cut into the corners and 
And now the moment of truth. Grab our blunt nose, stub nose pliers, and we want to kind of work it out and get it to snap along the score line. Now, remember, if you do make a bit of a mess of this, I already have in these some of these corners, it's okay because the kit I have uh, has got a replacement front plate. So here we go. Right, that turned out far from perfect, uh, primarily because uh, my scoring went for a bit of a walk over here. Uh, the rest of it isn't too bad, but we want to clean it up, so I suggest the combination of a knife and an emery board. Right, that is significantly less bad. Uh, if you're wondering why this one looks so wonky, it's actually got a divot in it that's kind of now semi-smoothed out. It's a good thing it comes with a replacement lens cover. Right, now we finally turn our attention to the IPS kit. Now, I bought this one from Retro Game Store here in Australia. Uh, A, because um, it was quicker to get. They offer express postage. Uh, and secondly, because it kind of comes with everything. Uh, a lot of the time, as far as I can tell, when you order this kit, there's certain things you don't get, you've got to order separately. So for instance, it comes with the bracket for the actual screen and it does come with the replacement lens cover. So that means you're not ordering separate bits, so on and so forth. So that's kind of cool. So we're gonna start with the actual screen. So flip it over, take, the ribbon cable and place it about there and this should bend over and click in assuming it's lined up that's finally snapped in right we can fold that over and take the bracket feed the ribbon cable through this hole and this should just drop in over the top. And that's it. That's that bit done. Next, we want to bring in our modded cover, bring the screen and bracket and so forth in. Uh, let's remove the dust protector, but carefully put it to one side. This should drop straight in, uh, line up the two at the top first, and in it goes. I would now suggest that you just temporarily drop this back on while we continue working. And that's that there. Next, bring in your buttons again. And put that to one side. Next, let's take a look at the replacement front PCB. We flip it over, we want to retrieve our speaker and we want to solder our speaker back into place. Easy. All right, bring our front cover back in, get our speaker in place with its little notch and drop this in like so uh, and put a bunch of screws back in it. Next is the kind of fiddly bit. This ribbon here needs to go into this connector. So we open up the bales and kind of bend it 
and get it in there. And lock the bales back in. Right, that bit's good. Next in the center here, take the ribbon cable that comes with the kit and slot that in uh, terminal side down. Right, that's that done. So it's time to bring the back half of the case back in. Uh, like I said, I've given all this a scrub and I've done the battery terminals. Uh, so we need to connect this to this. And this should just be a case of plugging this ribbon cable in. And we're in. And kind of folding it all up inside. And we're good. Now, the logical thing would be to now throw some batteries in it. and Vata batteries just to scare all the Amiga people. Let's put a game in it. Let's see if it works. Well, it lights up. I think this cartridge might be a bit not great. There we go. Nice. Let's put the rest of the screws in it. Right, I've put the uh, screen protector back on and very nice, very cool. So let's take a quick look at some of the functions uh, on this screen. Uh, we obviously have brightness. Uh, if we tap the button, um, we can choose through different palettes. Uh, I quite like the slightly yellow one. And if we hold the button in, we get kind of a mode, which is very contrasty. Um, and, but what it's actually doing is it's getting rid of all the tiny little individual pixel lines. So kind of think of it as like scan lines, but I actually prefer it on, like in that mode there. Um, I think it gives a bit more of a, a natural Game Boy look to it. But the screen is just beautiful. I'm really happy with this. So I should point out that this screen isn't completely without fault. There is some tiny little artifacting that appears on the title screen of Zelda here. Um, put it this way, I had to bust out my uh, magnifying glass to be able to see it, although that may say more about my eyesight than anything else. The other thing it does is when the screen blanks, it does some weird horizontal lines. Now, this only seems to happen in the retro pixel mode, the thing I referred to before as scan lines. Uh, and if you put it into what I call the high contrast mode, it doesn't do it. So there you go, one backlit original Game Boy. Uh, and I think it is absolutely brilliant. The screen is crystal sharp. Um, the palette colors do what you want with them. Like I said, I like the kind of the traditional 
puke yellow, I think you could call it. Um, now, this video isn't sponsored or anything like that. I simply jumped online. I paid for this myself, but I will put a link to uh, the place that I got it. Uh, what's their name? Retro Game Store. Uh, I'll put a link to this down in the description. Um, but that will pretty much do it. Uh, if you like the video, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. If you'd like to help support the uh, channel, you can find me on Patreon, just like these wonderful people just here. Uh, and until then, I'll see you in the next one. However, that kind of does, you're in shot, not my nice box one. We're going to put it in this one right here. And that is the Game Boy. It's upside down. G'day internet, welcome back to another video. So if you've been following the channel, mm, nah, needs to plug into the original board. And this is a little kind of tricky. Where am I going? Wrong way. All right. G'day internet, welcome back to another video. So if you, so if you have been related and that it was a games console. Um, now, the logical thing at this point would be to realize that I left the power switch out.